Well, we've run into a little bit of a plot twist with our 4.0 Jeep rebuild, freshen up. The cylinder head is pooched. She's done. So let's go back to the beginning. When we first tore our motor apart, we first took the head off, we saw that the number one cylinder, so this is, this is the front of the engine, this is the back of the engine, the number one cylinder, the cylinder walls looked terrible. The top of the piston was all flaky with carbon and stuff like that. The cylinder walls had scratches in them. It was rusty. And we were expecting when we took the bottom end of the engine apart that our problem, our noise, was going to be from that hole. But when we pulled the number one piston out, the skirts were good, the rings were good, everything was good. It was a little bit puzzling. Then we got to the opposite end of the engine. We pulled out number six. And number six is where we found our broken skirt which is what ultimately sidelined this engine. But still, why did number one, why was number one such a mess? Well, as we said, we recommended that if you're going to do this, you're probably better off just getting a reconditioned cylinder head and going from there. But if you wanted to do your own cylinder head, we were going to do ours. And so we'll run you through the, the process. Well, as it turns out, we found that this head is cracked in the bowl of the number one intake valve. So putting detective work together, what probably happened was this thing ran for a while with that crack, got hot, and it, when it got hot, it broke the skirt on the number six. So the problem started at number one and it manifested itself as number six. Now this head is toast, this thing is done. But we'll go through, I'll point out all of the different things that you need to know if you're going to do one of these heads yourself. Let's first talk about this crack and cracked heads in general. So, if you look in here, you can see a diagonal rust line. Okay? Now, there's no water on the floor of the port. If I flip, flip this thing over, you see there's no water on the floor. This, all of this water originates right here. And like I said, it's a diagonal line and it's just crusty, rusty mess. So, this is the outline of the crack right here. It's done. Now it's unusual. Very rarely do you find a head cracked in one of the bowls like that, but this one is. So, and that explains now, that explains why all of the water and the mess and the rusty stuff in that number one cylinder. This is unusual, but a lot of times you'll come across heads that are cracked, especially like there are some of them like the, the Chrysler Magnum heads, or any of the heads that have a relatively small combustion chamber and very big valves, because you end up with a very narrow area between the valves, so you'll get a crack, like for instance, the Magnum heads will crack straight across, just like this, okay? This is one of those situations where you have a judgment call to make. Now, there's no judgment call here. This thing's done, and there's just absolutely no hope of repairing this in any reasonable way. So we're just going to scrap this head. But if you've got a head that's cracked like this, here comes your judgment call, right? So if you're doing an engine for a customer, if you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it for somebody else, and you come across a head that's cracked like that, toss it. It's no good. Now, if you're doing this for yourself, here's what you've got to keep in mind. Right now, out in the world, there are tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand, cracked Magnum engines. Magnum engines with cracked cylinder heads with that crack there that are out in traffic and doing their thing day in and day out. And there's no hint of a crack at all. It, crack is only discovered when the head is taken apart to be serviced or cleaned up. And you see those cracks and it's like, oh, it's junk, throw it away. They're out there running with those cracked areas because that crack is inconsequential. It doesn't spread up into a water jacket. It's just a stress crack that happens between that really thin area between the seats. So if you're doing, a, if you're doing one of these things for a customer, right? you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it for somebody else, you find that crack, toss that head. Don't use it. If you're putting it back together again for yourself and you find a crack like that, Odds are 99.999% that it will be fine. It's not going to spread anywhere past there. It's not, it'll never leak water. The slight, I mean, the, 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 the hundred thousandth of an inch, that we, even at that, uh, gap is not going to affect the seat or, or the ceiling or anything. So 
Like, for instance, when I come across a head like that for myself, I just use it. I don't even think about it because I, I know the nature of that crack. And if you go back, go back to, like, when I first started with nitro cars in, like, the 1980s, a lot of guys were still using cast iron cylinder heads, the Chrysler cylinder heads. A hundred percent of them were cracked. The first run, first time you put this thing on, you know, you take, it, take a head, bolt it on the engine, make one run with it, it's cracked. And you just keep running them and running them and running them until eventually that crack will torch out. But that's, that's a, an extreme situation. So judgment calls. There's so many judgment calls when you're doing an engine. And, and based on its intended use and who you're doing it for is where you have to. So that's that kind of crack. You've got other types of cracks that'll happen. I know that these Jeep heads, some of these Jeep heads will crack in the water jackets up here. Right? Sometimes they're freeze cracks, sometimes they're stress cracks, sometimes it's, it's just a, a bad casting. And those can be fixed, but in a situation like this where there's a very common throwaway kind of cylinder head, don't even bother with it. You know, you can weld it or you can pin it, and you do that if it's a rare, hard to find cylinder head, or if you've got a cylinder head that you've got a lot of work in, a lot of porting and stuff, and you got a crack like that, then it's worth saving. But when you come across one that's got a crack across the top like this anywhere, and it's just a regular common head, don't waste your time. Just toss the thing. So that's the situation with this. And I'm gonna, at the end of this video, I'll tell you what I'm thinking about doing at this stage. So let's talk about other aspects of a cylinder head if you're going to be doing one of these yourself. So when we poured gas in the chambers to see which of the valves might be leaking, we found that the number six exhaust valve was leaking. So here's your number six exhaust, okay? And here's the seat. We cleaned up a little scotch bright so you could see better. And you can see that the seat has a lot of marks like this, okay? And here is the valve. So now if we look at the valve, let's put this valve right there, okay? And you can see, here's the seat. Look how thin the seat is here. Okay, and then let's flip it around, and you can see how thick the seat is here. So you see where this valve was burning. It's not round. That's telltale, so you throw that away. Other times you'll get a valve that'll burn in a much more obvious way where you'll see a little chip missing out of it. You know, it'll, it'll actually torch out a little section of the valve. That's one way a valve can burn, and this is another way a valve can burn. So what I recommend, if you find one burned valve in an engine, just change all of them. Don't waste your time. This seat isn't bad. This seat can be cleaned up. I would send this to a machine shop. This is beyond where you're just going to lap out, you know, hand lap the, uh, the damage out of that seat. But it's not a big deal. That can be cleaned up. So that's that. Like I said, just throw them away. If you find one, it means they've all, they've all been subjected to the same basic lifestyle and the same kind of trauma. Not worth it. They're like $8 each. Just throw a new set in. Valve guides. So that's seats and valves. But let's talk about valve guides because that's another thing that the home guy is going to have a hard time with. You're not going to be able to put valve guides on. So the guide... Very rarely, actually never, the stem never wears on these things, but the guide will wear. So here's what you need to know about this. The seal is still, I didn't pull the valve seal off. Here's what you need to know about this. The factory way, the proper way to check the guide is to put, here, let's use this one, is to put a valve in there and using a dial gauge, a dial indicator, you want to check the play back and forth. All right, actually, here, I'll give you an illustration. I've got an illustration. Here. You can see this is, this is from an old factory service manual. But that's the setup you would use to check end play in the guide, side, side to side play in the guide. And for your engine, and the reason why it's important that you know this, Every engine has a slightly different tolerance, so you need to know what the tolerance is for the cylinder head that you're working on, if you're going to measure it that way. Now, nobody ever really measures them that way. I'm going to give you the quick, easy, backyard way that's worked for 100 years, and it's pretty much foolproof. 
take the guide or the valve, put it in the head like so. Okay? Now pull your finger over the guide. Give it wet your finger, put it over the guide like this, and then pull the valve. Look what happens. See the valves getting sucked back in? See? Okay, that guide is good. That's really all you need to know. If you can create a seal over the top of the guide, pull the valve out, like so, and have the valve spring back in, it means that the guide is good. If the guide is bad, if it's sloppy, then send it to the machine shop and they'll either knurl it or they'll put another guide in, depending on the head, depending on what you're going to do with it. There's, over, there's oversized valve stems that they could use. It all depends on your particular application. So that's what you need to know about that. Now, this thing is done. Is there anything else I wanted to talk about before we... No, I think I covered pretty much everything. So this thing is done. It's getting tossed on the scrap pile completely unceremoniously. And now I'm debating. I'm debating what to do with this. Because I can get a reconditioned head for this. But on the flip side, remember this is supposed to be for my red truck, the one that I drive every day. And that engine runs absolutely perfectly. It has a noise on the bottom end, and that's why we're going through this motor. So I'm thinking at this stage of the game, what I might do, because you know, it's, it's the devil you know versus the devil you don't. So I know that head is good and it runs perfectly, and all I would have to do is just clean up the valves and, and put, oh, clean up the valves. Sorry, this is important. This is important. Your intake valves, while you've got this thing apart, because you got to take, if you're going to do this yourself, you got to take the valves, the springs off anyway, and you're going to change the seals. While you're at it, cleaning the back face of the intake valve is so important. I can't begin to tell you. Here's, here's the valve from the cracked bowl. Now, I ran this over to the bench grinder. I got a wire wheel and a bench grinder and cleaned it up real quick. Cleaning the back face of the valve like this is crucial to your engine's overall efficiency. When you've got, here's a, here's a normal one. When you've got this kind of carbon buildup on the back of the valve, that carbon acts as an insulator. One of the, one of the main functions, well, one of the main features of the intake valve is that this is the point where gasoline is initially vaporized. So it comes through your carburetor or your fuel injection as an atomized mixture, meaning that the droplets are just broken up into, into a tiny form and mixed in with the air. But it doesn't become vaporized until it hits heat. And the first place that it encounters heat is on the back face of the intake valve. This surface right here is extremely important to the efficiency of your engine, of how the thing runs. When it's coked up like this, you got carbon and oil buildup, it's just, just the general junk that grows on the back of a valve, that acts as an insulator, and it doesn't allow the full heat from the valve itself to radiate to the back and help vaporize that gasoline. Keeping your valve clean, going through them, is like super important to overall efficiency of the engine. Like night and day. If you ever wondered why an engine runs so rough, so bad, until it starts to build a little heat, you start a cold engine, and you got to throw a bunch of gas at it to get it to run, it's because the back of the valves aren't hot enough to start vaporizing the fuel yet. Or add up, yeah, vaporizing it. So... That's why it takes a little while for the engine to start smoothing out. It's that face, it's the back section of the valve getting hot enough to get the vaporization going. The spark plug lights a mixture real easy. So I, I'm, I'm probably talking about this more than I have to, but it's just something I really want to stress. Very, very, very important that the back face of the intake valves is as clean as you can get it. All right. So as I was saying, it's the devil you know versus the devil you don't. I can get a recon head, and I don't know what's going on in there. I can find another, I can go get a junkyard head and recondition it myself. You know what? I don't think I want to be bothered. Edelbrock makes a nice aluminum head for these things. And what I think I'm going to do is do the short block 
on this engine. Take the head off the engine that's currently in the truck, clean it up, throw some seals in it, and then put it on this engine. And then that one is going to get hot rodded. That one we're going to do a stroker on. And I was going to do, I was going to port the head and all of that, but instead I'm thinking I'll just get one of those Edelbrock aluminum heads and use that as a foundation. I'm not certain yet. I don't know yet. But this is my thought process at this stage of the game. So that's it. I covered everything I wanted to cover here. We go back to the short block and clean that up and order parts. And that's where we'll pick up on the next installment of your first engine job. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.